Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stephanie Stevens Show. Today on my show, I'm really excited because it's Pride Month all around the world, and everybody is in full celebration. So here we are in downtown Toronto, and today I invited Miss Jessica Montgomery on all the way from Indiana, um, and it's gonna, it's gonna, we're going to have a great show today because mm -hmm. we're talking all about pride, yes. um, the, the past, the present, and where do we go from here? Mm. Now, I just want to say, and we also have Mr. Chadwick Chung. He'll be chiming in in the middle to ask Ms. Jessica a few um, questions of his own from London, Ontario. Ooh. Now, how are you, Ms. Jessica Montgomery? How are you, girl? Good, baby. We just got done uh, doing, uh, you know, our pride here was, you know, it's kind of not quiet, but we just had our block party at one of the main bars. The crowds came out. We had hundreds of people. Everybody drank and socialized and drank shows. And so it was like nothing was out of place except for the parade. You know? Oh, well, you know, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for doing this for oh, me. It's just my thank pleasure. You so much for helping and supporting me create content for us, for us. That means all of us. Yes. Now, I have to ask, because my agent, she always puts it here. How do you identify? Um, I, I'm male, you know, but I do, uh, you know, people say, do you, you know, when you're out as a man, you know, do you want to call it by your drag name or your show? It doesn't bother me, either name, whichever name pops in your head. You know, I'm, I'm feminine. There's no question about that. I mean, honey, I've, I've got Skittles over my head, you know. Um, you know so, so you basically identify as a man, but when you're in drag, you're identified as a she. Yes. Yeah. I mean, treat me like a girl. Don't, you know, don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, first of all, um, are you actually, did you, how have you been dealing with the pandemic? First of all, let's talk about that. The pandemic for a performer or a drag artist. Do you work during the day? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I do hair and makeup and, and, and things like that. And so little costumes here and there for people. So it gives me stuff to do, you know, mm -hmm. so I wasn't totally stuck in the house. like you know, going ape, ape crap, you know, like, what am I going to do? You know, mm -hmm. I found stuff to do because you just have to do it. That's what you have to do. You have to find things to do. Mm -hmm. Now, so during the lockdown, do you live alone? Yep. I, well, me and my dog, you know, it's my okay. little. Life, so. so you have some company. Oh, so yeah. So you were able to, so, you know, like a lot of people, we ask this because a lot of people that had programs such as whether they're, um, you know, they're going to their weekly LGBT program for trans women or um, meal trans for trans women, or just things that they would do to be part of the community and the support of the community, whether, you know, they're helping us with food or they're helping us financially, or they're helping us with just keeping our mental um, um, health in check, whatever it may be. Now, did you did you miss any of those things? Well, no, I uh, I got to work for the last couple of years for a, one of our local bars here, um, known as Downtown Ollie's here in Indianapolis. And we are, that bar is, is literally the number one uh, all 24 seven restaurant in all of Indiana. Like it's mm -hmm. in a magazine. And so before pandemic, we, they were open 24 seven and we served food all day long, all night long. And uh, I was uh, had the great good luck to come in and clean the bar when the people were gone. And the owners, the new owners, Peggy and David, they had bought the place and just got just came in the pandemic. And they've been that they were the most wonderful owners. You know, they made sure that they filed that paycheck protection program. They took the time to give us all the food out of the refrigerator for all the employees. I mean, they they rescheduled and shifted people's around schedules, you know, and 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 made it work all the way to till now. So, well, you know, it's good that the community, in a sense, the LGBT two spirit pronoun community. I, I I try to say that is all the way through because there's a few times that I've said it and people got on me where I just stopped short of finishing <laughs> it off. So yeah, I don't want to, we we don't want to be arguing. <laughs> we want to try to make sure that we include everyone. Yeah, that's the, so, that's that word that people don't use is inclusive. They don't. They just you know they sort of leave people up uh, uh, hanging there. You know. Yeah. So um, it's glad I'm glad that a lot of the programs, because a lot of the programs in our community, a lot of the outreach people still reached out to help a lot of the of the girls and some of the seniors in the community. 
and a lot of people that just needed the support of whether it was food, financial, like I said, of some assistance of some kind. And it's good that the people in your area actually thought about you guys there. And yeah, I mean, we, uh, we, a lot of the girls here did a thing. I don't know if you do them there, but when the pandemic hit and you couldn't perform anywhere, a lot of the girls here were doing living, living room drag shows, you know, in their basements mm -hmm. and their attics and raising money and sending it to the HIV organizations and to people that needed it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's a good thing that we actually, you know, even me living alone and I'm lucky that I got lots of virtual work after pounding the pavement. I got lots of it. So a lot of people responded to me pounding the pavement, which, and, um, and it benefited me mentally and it benefited me financially, which I'm blessed. Mm -hmm. and I, I was glad to see a lot of the girls hitting the pavement. I know Facebook didn't like the fact that a lot of the girls were on there using the artist's music and the, you know, and all this stuff. They let a few slide through. They let them slide through for a little bit so they can make a little money. <laughs> <laughs> make a little right. money but you know what for you I mean being out is it did I say Indiana Indianapolis uh -huh. did I say it right okay yep. now for me this is a, would be a small town right you live in a small uh, town? well it's small but it's big I mean we there's stuff to do um, you know, most of our bar, when I first moved here, uh, we had a lot of bars and some of the bars closed down. Well, first, a lot of the entertainers were leaving town, you know, just for jobs and husbands moving and stuff like that. And then a lot of the bars closed down. I thought, oh, my God, what's going on? I thought, I'm a, everybody's jumping ship. What's happening? You know, mm -hmm. and then and then it was that way for a while. And then the pandemic hit. And then it really just, you know, the, you know, the curfews and blah, blah, all this other stuff going on. But all that was discombobulating for us here because mm -hmm. we didn't know what, what which way end was up. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the parade. Yeah. You said that you guys didn't have a parade this year. No. Not even a virtual parade. No. We well, we did uh, a lot of the virtual stuff. We did some virtual stuff, like a virtual pride last year, and then this year we were able to have a block party. You know, and and uh, have a, so many people in at it. You know, for the occupancy thing and. So at least with, there were people out in public now for that. So by, I think by next year, we'll have to pray again. Okay. Now, you know, in Toronto, we had a huge controversy about the police being in the past parades. Now, no, I, what, I don't what, think, what, why is that? I mean, that's... Stand, what, what would be your stance on that? For me, <clears throat> I mean, not that you have to follow my opinion. For me, uh, not just because I'm older now, and I need protection from this source or that source or whatever. I think in general, when we're out in public and mainly in a, in a, in a place of celebration that so many people are against or they protest against or have views about, um, I, I believe that the police should be in the parade regardless in uniform because um, I just think that people need to be able to visually see someone in case something is actually happening right and um that is just my opinion what, what do you think about that well i think i think that there should be you know i've always said that you know uh somebody said to me well i just don't understand the gay pride parade why don't we just dress normal do they have to dress like that all the leather and the feathers and the blitz and the glass and i said well honey they don't dress like that when they work at the bank you know, when they work at their real estate office, that's the, this is the one time to release their fun stuff, you know, and, and, and over the years, it's gotten much, much better because I, I remember there were times that people uh, on the news would just show people's feet walking by. They wouldn't show crowds. They show, they show their feet. And, and I know that a lot of heterosexual people were probably looking and go, see, that's what gay people look like. That's, you know, and you're teaching these kids that, you know, the wrong angle to go with. And it's gotten much better. Uh, a lot better. And I think that now we should have, um, we should be able to show that there are gay cops, gay firemen, gay, you know, people, we have normal jobs, we have our houses, we pay mortgages on houses, we, uh, you know, we uh, cut the lawns like everybody else, you know. So what do you think about the safety issue? Oh, I think, I think it's important to have that around because that way it sort of gives out that nonverbal message that, that nothing's going to happen. That, 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 we're, that we're protected, but give out that message to the other people on the outside that, uh, uh, uh don't try it. You know, we're, we're, we're here, we're watching, you know, the eyes in the sky are watching. So, so, so you feel we should have visible police? 
Oh yeah, I mean not 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 skip like not a lot of it because you know I'm enough enough of it. Don't make it look like a you know like oh my god they, they, are they gonna gas bomb us and fire you know uh, tear gas us if it's something crazy happens, but just make us give it that mid level you know okay. the safety level. Yeah, a protection. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, as you know, in the last few years, we've had a lot of bashing online from not just online in general from the trans we had a real spike in regard i know there's a lot of shootings and all these things happening in the u.s now but around the world we had a real spike in trans murders mm -hmm. now i've talked to quite a few of the heavyweight girls that are in the business for a long time and and we all understand escorting and we all understand that you know a girl's got to do what she's got to do and we're not saying that every trans woman is an escort we're not saying any of this regardless it's just women in general or women who identify as women and trans women who consider themselves women and just people in general who um feel that they should be able to do what they want with their bodies. Right. Now, lots of these trans women have been murdered. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I just very good. We see some advocacy towards this. What do you think needs to be done to make the queens and the women, real women as well, just to make the business of escorting safer? I see in New York that they passed a law now in mm -hmm. New York City to where they, you know, trying to help the, the, the trans women who escort or like they say in some cities, prostitution, um, which I think they've been locking up these women for too long yeah, about, you know, trying to control them and what they do with their bodies. And it's a good step that the that the judge in New York City made some effort or the governor made some effort or effort to decriminalize this in a sense, I think will make it safer for the girls, whether they're real women or trans women or women or trans women who identify as women. Now, yeah, I think that I think that uh, a lot of these girls. Number one, they should always uh, first and foremost always be careful what you're doing, where you're going, how you how you're doing, it. and and it's not it's okay. You know, when, when I was in a, a, a Tennessee for a while, a lot of those girls. There were a couple of girls that were killed, leave with dates, and they wouldn't tell them. You should always tell somebody who you're with. You know, it's okay if your friend takes the license plate of a car that you're getting into because it's not that you're snooping. It's not that you want to know their business. You need to know that you're going from point A to point B and back. And if mm -hmm. something happens to you, they want to know the last thing that they saw. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, the same, I, I always said, I always said this, regardless, before back in the days when I was doing shows and hanging out with all the girls, I've always said they should have decriminalized prostitution and escorting from the get-go, because I always thought that it would have made it safer for the girls. <clears throat> yeah. Now, now that we're, we seem to have so much media now, now with us being in the mainstream, not just with um, pose with with Billy Porter. Yeah, that's a that's a really good and putting himself right on the line, and yet still trying to um, balance out his own identity as the pronoun of what he wants to be and what he's doing. And then we have Tyler Perry, who's now hiring lots of trans people and different minorities to show diversity and inclusiveness. And then, of course, we have RuPaul Drag Race that's trying to show the young children, you know, to have fun and dress up and just be themselves. Right. You know, where do you think we should go from here now that we have the world's attention? Well, I think I think po I mean I, I love pose. Everybody loves pose. That was a great representation of how it was. I think it, it's and how it still is. Kind of, it's not that it's not that far in the past, but that was a great start to show the people who've never seen that world what mm -hmm. it is, what those girls go through. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just all glitter and glam and glitz and fabulous parties. And you know, these girls have a, have to find a place to live. They have to make a man and ends meet. You know, they have to pay their bills. Um, you know, that's how it was. Uh, and I think that a lot of these girls, 
Um, I feel sad that we've lost so many. Uh, there was that wave. You're right. They're, they're, we're, they were just dying left and right. And I thought, what is going on? I thought, you know, every time I turn around, somebody, the Continental girls were a victim of that for a while, too. Mm-hmm. And I was upset about that because I worked with a lot of those girls. And I think it's just it's OK to uh, put, it, you know, um, you know, decriminalize it, like you said, and uh, these girls need to work on protecting themselves more and, and get help from, uh, you know, write, write the important people that make these laws and change that can change them, you know, because you're not going to see change unless you do something, you see, unless you speak up. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, yeah. bitch, don't bitch about voting if you, if you didn't vote. That's right. <laughs> I say that all the time. Don't bitch about voting if you didn't vote. Now, another thing that seems to be in the news. Now, it, 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 to me, I, I understand her anger towards maybe something that she's experienced. And we'll, I'll get into that after I ask you this question. As you know, J.K. Rowling is the author of the Potter Harry, the Harry Potter series. Mm-hmm. Now, she's been on t- all over TV, all over national networks, talking about her disdain for trans women and the fact that trans women aren't women. And um, she has been very vocal about that sort of um, her opinion on this. What do you think? Do you think? Do you think she's right, or do you think she is is meddling? Where? What, what? Do you think she's right, and why do you think she has such a hatred for trans women? Uh, well, I mean, I think right away. Obviously, what that says to me is she must have had some kind of weird experience, or maybe one of her own family or something. You know, one of her children, one of her uncle, anybody, because if she's that hardcore about it, saying, no, 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 I hate it, then something must have happened to, in her own life where she's like just disgusted, got got a weird, bad version of that and said, oh, my God, you know, and freaked out. And now that's coming forth. And she's like, oh, and, and, and she don't, I don't like it. And she won't, you know, because people are afraid of what they don't know. That's the mm-hmm. thing about that. People are afraid of what they don't know. Um, and so I think uh, she needs to stay, well, obviously she needs to stay in her little world of, of fantasy and, and magic and because that has nothing to do with, that's two way opposite worlds, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and she needs to start looking at a lot of these uh, other movies, you know, so many different movies because there's every now and then you'll see trans girls popping in and out of these movies in big roles that are mm-hmm. making big bucks. And, and it's, you know, she needs to look at it and go, oh, well, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe there's a spot for this. You know, well, you know, I look at it as this is when you have such an influence like that and you have such power like that, you should be using your voice for good. And like you said, I think she had some experience, whether it was a boyfriend or a husband or somebody who went out with a trans woman and she found out. Yeah, about and, and, and then she, like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she has a real hate on for it. I'm sure it'll come out in the in the papers. Well, and and, the and what a bad person. What a what a if she was a nobody, it would, it would get fly. But, you know, she, look at who she is. That, that doesn't mm-hmm. she realize that that could just grab a hold of her book sales and all this other stuff. And, you know. Because nobody's going to want to buy books from a from a homophobic person. No. Now, so let's talk about your. How was the block party? How was that? Oh my god, it was so crazy. I mean, I I think my eyelashes melted off. Okay. Like that, it was so hot and and, and crazy and and uh, I think I changed clothes like five six times and you know you know thank God a friend of mine had a big. Uh, a band uh, like an RV kind of thing, and all these queens kept running. And they said, "Where's she going?" And they'd see me go in one way and come out the other in a whole other outfit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at least it's good that the, the the lockdown now is kind of subsiding a little bit, and we're all sort of on the same page as getting vaccinated or trying to think about getting vaccinated and make things safer for us all. And it's good to see that you're out and about in the community and there is some resources to sort of make you feel like you, 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 you're part of the community again, things yeah. are happening, going back to real life. And, um, and maybe we've all learned a very valuable lesson from this that we need each other because 
being in my apartment alone all those months, yeah, and no shows and no. I can think about people even if you had a big family, you'd be tired of your big family. After well, because you know, when they started using them, I, I, I have to say, I, I'm not just in the CDC at all. They're the government. But when they started using the words lockdown and quarantine, I thought, honey, you have no clue what that word is. Because if that was a true lockdown, you would be able to go nowhere for nothing. Mm-hmm. So, don't, so don't, you know, don't start saying lockdown, quarantine. Girl, that's not quarantine. That's not lockdown. You have no <laughs> uh -uh. You know, it's it, it's great, though, that at the end of the day, hopefully, we've learned a lesson from all of this, that we need each other. And right. I mean, I'm glad that we've gotten way over the hump, the hump of it and gotten to this point, because when it first started, uh, everybody was scared to touch things and, and, and sit on things. And what do we wipe? What do we do? Well, should we wrap ourselves in bubble wrap? What do we do? You know, I mean, <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, I, you know, I say this also. Um, Jessica, it's a good thing that we all now are getting a little taste of what Black people and marginalized people have felt for so long, racism. Yeah, We're they, they, all getting a little bit of taste of that. Don't touch me. Get away from me. I don't like you. Move away. All yeah, I mean, I can't believe that I, I can't believe that our society was so that they maybe some people didn't want to believe it existed or it did always oh, it doesn't affect me so i'm fine well mm -hmm. it does affect you somewhere somehow you know you just know. like the hiv aids epidemic when that came around oh i don't know anybody but you do know somebody with aids see that's how that works yeah. you know it's funny i just for an example i when i see people walking down the street even couples and i cross the street it affects them and I know it affects them. And not that I'm even doing it at close range. I'm doing it at a distance, but I can hear them talking. Yep. And I know they're saying something about whether, you know, oh, he doesn't, they, they, you know, this and that, or whatever right. that is in their mind. But in general, when you look at it, it's putting us all on the same page in a sense of, you see, you've been treating these people um, um, it says this meeting had no longer has a time limit. I mean, I just think that, you know, when, when all this stuff, you know, I'm so glad that, um, uh, you know, the George Floyd thing and, you know, that was, you know, all that stuff. I'm so glad that that worked out the way it did. And, you know, the, the police officer that, uh, um, I mean, I, I wish people had seen when I, I'm, I'm sorry, I was rolling in pieces when they were sentencing him up the river because the mask is here and his eyes were darting everywhere. <laughs> he was like, oh. he, he was like, he was like oh. I was like, yes, honey, you're going to jail. Bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, much luck. so we're going to thank you so much for doing the show today. You have a great, wonderful and blessed pride. We're going to let oh, Chad. Yeah, I don't know what kind of stories you have there, but you need to go out and buy this lip gloss, girl. Iridescent mm -hmm. lip gloss. This is well, like, this I didn't put any on today because she keeps telling me to try to, you know, normalize it. So this way we, I mean, you can send me the link to what that lip gloss is. Um, Chad, because you're there. Yes, I LA colors. It's okay. like LA colors. No, Chadwick, you can't have this. This is fabulous lip gloss. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't think yeah. Chadwick wears lip gloss. Well, no, you know what the thing is, is I, I love it. You know, every now and then I would meet a gentleman, Paul, or back in the day um, when oh. I was probably younger, um, you know, and uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. I told Chadwick, I said, honey, I'm a seasoned queen. I'm so seasoned, I'm freaking blackened. Um, you know, um, <laughs> just saying. Um, and some of these boys who would come over and, I, you know, I mean, I I I feel very gifted. I told him that I'm helping. Been talking to a wonderful woman in Ireland, and her son is is wanting to get in drag. And I feel so bad. She's turned to me for all these questions, and and um, I I I want to get a hold of the the creator of that makeup group. And I I love all those girls on there, and and I I'm constantly on there giving them my tips and tricks and hit, you know. Well, you know, the good thing about all this is that we now have a platform where we can educate people about what we actually do when it comes to drag shows, how we paint, how we right. And you know what I like about this is that that group, I've not seen one 
hateful thing said, no, no backstabbing, nothing. It's all about how do I do this? How do I make this happen? And, and, and everybody's helpful about giving each other uh, tips and tricks and, and uh, you know. Well, the uh, good thing it. else is, is that we, this is, it, it's a good educational platform. People are hearing from people who have been doing it 30 plus years, who've oh, been wow. in this business and who's made a living. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, 20 plus years. Sure. Well, I, mean, I, 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 I told people, I said, I came from the era when uh, blue and green eyeshadow was my best friend. And I learned oh. real quick, the cover girl doesn't cover boy. Oh, <laughs> so we're going to have Chad with, tune in for just a second to ask yes. you a couple of questions. And then we're going to close off with oh, fabulous Miss Jessica Montgomery, all the way from Indianapolis, yeah. uh, talking to us about pride, pride memories, where we should go from here. And we need to send this to Ellen for the season 19. Uh-huh. Yeah, just saying. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Right. Go ahead, Chadwick. OK. I am going to condense my question, because I guess this question is going to be for both of you. So no. before I ask the question, I need to let you know where I'm coming from to give you this question. I started coming into the community late at the age of 25 when most people said i went to the bar when i was 19. Mm. Late start, i started performing when i was close to my 30s and of course drag was thrown at me by the homophobes oh that's what you want to be you're one of those girls and at the beginning i resented drag queens for giving me that image that i never created and i said one of these days i bet you i'm going to be friends with one of them i'm friends with a ton of them and i realized what was going on outsiders try to paint me as the picture of what they saw on the TV screen, like you and Jessica and, you know, all the famous queens. So when I realized I wanted to be a performer, I wanted to be a male performer, but I wanted to do what drag queens did. They took the stage. They had that presence. Give me a presence of my own so that I can do something with it. I don't want to wear a wig and a dress. I know how to be me, but I wanted that advice for business people in drag. So now, with that said, next week is going to be my last birthday in the 40s. Next year is a brand new baby for me. <laughs> now, my question about that is how, what kind of advice would an experienced drag queen like yourselves give advice to someone like me or younger than me who's just starting? What would advice would you give to someone like me that's trending in the community and haven't fallen off the bandwagon because i could have sworn the day i turned 30 i'm done i'm too old i said oh damn i'm almost 40 okay 40 that's a cutoff i turned 40 now i'm turning 50 okay so, so now are, are, so are you are you talking about tra uh, doing drag or shit? like what no, are you what i'm looking at reinventing myself as like right now i'm mr karaoke guy but people look at it as a show I used to be a break dancer way back in the day in the, in the early 80s. Then I right. was to be a Michael Jackson impersonator. And then all of a sudden, when the gay community came along, I became an entertainer by own. So I was using my actual name as an image. So because I'm approaching 50 next year, I just thought, since I'm in a new decade, that's the best time to reinvent myself. But as what? <laughs> Everybody sees me as that ranchy Jamaican dance hall boy, but no one's heard me sing love songs. And right. Well, I mean, if you do, if you run karaoke, if that's your, if that's your business, um, I think you could, uh, you know, try and incorporate something fun within that. You know, like we're funny to the loud bits, and you know, just, just it up a little bit. You know, just. Uh, well, I don't host it. I, I, I participate in it like everybody else. But when I, I've been doing it for so many years, some people actually try to pick me out of karaoke and say, "Wait a minute, you don't belong in karaoke. You belong on that big stage with a presence and making the money." I said, "But this is a, uh, this is what I do after I'm work. I'm done work. I'm not doing it as work. But they right. make it a workable way. Make some money." I said, "If I start making money at my at my hobby, I'll probably end up hating it. <laughs> I want I want to keep loving what I'm doing. So what can I?" Well, you know, Chadwick, this is what I say, and it's it's it, it, it's worked for millions of people, and I'm, it took me a long time to get my head around it. But I really find that if you want to reinvent yourself, you have to do something that you're passionate about and focus all your attention on that passion, creating it, developing it, working it, doing it, practicing it. 
and right. just mention it. And then you have to add a little glitter on top of that to get people's attention. And then if that don't get their attention, you add a little more glitter. That's what we do in drag. Our wigs can't get big enough. No, exactly. Can't get big enough. I, I saw that actually one drag queen I saw and lives here in London. I always had the big, big hair and everything. And one day she shocked the hell out of everybody. She came with a very, very short, short thing. And it was like, who is that? We didn't realize it was the same queen that we've known for years. It was yeah. a whole different image. It was almost like, it was almost like she had the old 80s Holly Berry look. When we used to sing the Patty LaBelle here. <laughs> and it was like, it was well, a yeah. short line. The good thing about the good thing about what we do as entertainers and performers is that we love what we do. So if you love what you do, um, Chadwick, you will find a way to create and make that fabulous for your audience because that's who you are, and that's what we do. We yeah. are here to entertain, and we are entertained. And we love what we do. And when you love what you do, it will all make sense. Yeah, because when you go on stage, when we go on stage, uh, you know, it's like a job. If you don't love your job, if you're not, if you're, you're going to walk in that job looking like death warned over, you know, the people are going to ask you what's wrong. And when you entertain, you can put on all the acts, but people see through that facade really quick. When you hit that stage, you got to perform like there's a hundred people in that room and there may only be five. And if you don't act like you're having a god a, a freaking good time, people will see it right here. And they're like, mm, you know. You know what I call oh. that? I call that the flight attendant moment. How many times have I sat on a plane and all I do is watch the flight attendants and how, the, oh, she didn't smile at him when she walked by. And it's almost like you're nitpicking at them. I said, is that what people do to me when I'm on stage? I'm sitting there in my seat. That's the seat belt. Well, right well, see, the thing about the thing about drag is I've worked in a lot of towns where, uh, uh, you know, when I went to, uh, uh, where is it, Minnesota, you know, there, that there's a big, big drag bar. And let me tell you, I love the girls there that I met, but it's honey. If they think you're even really good, you are not getting past the first gate because the, and I asked somebody what the deal was and they said, oh, they're worried about losing their spot or their, but okay, stop right there. If they are so worried about losing their spot, then maybe they need to step their game up. No. That's how that works. Thank you. Thank you. Some people have actually said that I am not a threat to drag queens because I don't do drag. And I said, well, I didn't come here to be a threat. I came here to love what I'm doing. Well, who, cares if, well, who cares if you were or who cares if you were or not? That's their problem, not yours. But, but drag queens were actually at each other. It's almost like it's okay to be here, but you know what? There's only one queen in well, that. See, the thing I, the, right. The thing I've seen, which I, I it, it just hurts my stomach, where I've seen because I was in this position when I started doing shows, I wanted to do shows. Um, you know, my my mother took me to La Cage Fo on stage on Broadway. And I said, mommy, do you remember what you asked me what I want to do when I grow up? She said, yep. And I said, that. And she's like, what? And I said, why do you want to do that? And I said, look at them. They're the glitter and the glitz and the applause. And I said, I want to be, I want to be on that stage. And she said, oh, all right, that's what you want to do. You know, I guess, I guess being a doctor is out, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, so over the years I did drag and uh, I, I put, you know, liquid Maybelline makeup on my three o'clock shadow and thought I looked the, the deal. And I had, uh, honey, I had people dipping their napkins in their drinks and throwing them at me. <laughs> yeah. I have oh, no, wait, no, wait. Yeah, wait for it. Then, then they got creative. Then they took whole bowls of popcorn. <laughs> whole bowls of popcorn. Sure. Oh, no, wait. And then the final kicker was, and I think I told you this, uh, Stephanie, was um, I, they would throw change at me on the stage. And that's the worst hateful thing they could do. And I thought, oh, they wanted me to check my tail between my legs and run. And every Thursday at the gong show in Cleveland, they would gong me before I'd get on the stage. That's <laughs> so, um, so I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach this bitch a lesson. So the next Thursday, I came and I said, oh, here she comes. And they said, OK. And I heard that change tinging on the stage. And I turned around. And what they didn't see was I pulled bank change rollers out of my bra and started rolling the change on the stage during mm -hmm. lip sync. And they're like, girl, she's rolling that change. And the owner of the bar said, of course she is. She's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> well that's the way to do it you know you guys have been amazing today and the conversation has been fun and you know <clears throat> what, what Chadwick what are your plans for pride you know I, I have lots of virtual shows coming up and lots of things I'll share with you guys <clears throat> to show you and a little bit I'm in action in some of them before usually I'm just sitting down or I'm talking 
but now they I'm, I'm moving around a bit so things are going to be good but you know we are here in toronto we're right in the middle of it now um and starting on the i think it's tomorrow starts all the shows or a lot of the virtual shows around town and then by the end of the month you'll start seeing outdoor shows where people yeah, I would have I would love to come you know I I I, I would love to come there or Chad, Chadwick's in, in London come to London I'm an hour see, and a half see I, ha I hate you guys because I'm sure I that's like that's part of my fantasy bucket list like here I went I had the great good luck to go to uh, Seattle Washington my mm -hmm. friend hashtag Molly that's her drag name her, uh, her rich Jewish husband flew me first class and just to show you how stupid I am ready for this I'm standing in line. You know how they get everybody on the plane and they and they do first class people first. I'm standing in line like with my thumb on my butt and I turn to the right girl. The sign that says first class passengers are standing over here. I had to get out of line. Girl. I didn't know what I was doing. Then then I got first class. Here she gives her the towel on a, on a, a, a pair of tongs. No, they told me the freaking towel was hot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like girl. stupid Jewish girl, you know. So I mean, I would love to come there and perform because I mean, I don't know what those girls would think of me, you know. Because I'm sure London, the London queens are probably stunning, you know. Um, we're, we're, working, we're, working on, we're working on something now with the launch of Pronoun TV. We're going to have a big launch um, extravaganza. I'll tell you more about that down the road. We're working on it, and because um, I didn't want to come back because Seattle was washed. It was wonderful. I did, the bars were wonderful. The queens were. I didn't want to come back here to India. I was like, <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're gonna and we're, and we're gonna invite some of the guests down to perform and carry on and all of this. Um, um, Jasmine Masters brought that to my attention that I should do a big launch here because things are things could be amazing if we do some kind of a big event of some kind. So we've been thinking about it. I've talked to my agent. She created something. I can't talk much about it, but she created some a concept and we're going to run with it in the next few months. But we're going to we need to wait until we get out of this pandemic so that way we can make sure that we can get the entertainers here that we really want to have here that can cross the border without all these restrictions. Well, now, the, you know, now the pandemic, they're doing all I don't know about there in London, but here in America, you know, in the United States, they're doing all these crazy things they're giving people free flights and they're doing everything but give them a house to get them vaccinated just yeah. because they're, you know i mean it's crazy it's like girl well you know it's so i want to end with you guys i want to just say happy pride chadwick um i don't know if you're coming down to toronto because you know some of the restrictions are lifted here and so there's lots of people out on the patios and hanging around and stuff like that. And for you in Indianapolis, I'm glad that you had a great block party there, Jessica. And mm -hmm. I wish you nothing but continued success in the world of artistry and what we do. Keep yeah. that passion, keep that drive. Don't forget about your community at the end of the day. And remember, always do something. Just oh, yeah. do I'm, I'm, my dream is I'm going to open my own drag store. You know, that's my that's my dream. I want to do a drag store for the for the for the new girls or whatever. And I already cre created a concept name, which will remain nameless. So I'm like, not going to give it away, but it's funny as shit though when I came up with it. And yeah. I figured I figured when I get old and crinkly. Um, and by the <laughs> way, Chabic, how how old did Chadwick say he was? I'll be 49 next week. 41. Uh, yeah, Don't yeah. Okay, uh, how, uh, now, of course you're not supposed to guess a lady's age, but you know, peering through the makeup, how old do you guess I am? I have no idea because a lot of people look at me and they say, you must be almost 40. I'm like, you're close. You just add the change of four to a five. Well, when I take when I take off the uh, two layers of spackle and then the, uh, you know, the black tar number four around the eyes um, and then uh, take down the one layer of masking, you know, like on last Star Cruiser, we, you know, they takes up the base of the rag. Um, I'm 54. Oh, OK. You're, yeah. you're not that much older than me. <laughs> well, it's all it's all it's all it's all the, it's all the, it's the, the bandages I, I, I pulled screen back to California. You know, <laughs> actually, so, for me, age is not a, age for me is not a look; it's a feeling. Well, I mean, I was great. I was glad enough that at fifty something, um, I was able to I was able to win a title um, in two thousand seventeen. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. uh, in two thousand seventeen, I won this title, and it was the first it was the first pageant that a friend of mine per, uh, put together and said I should come do it and come do it. Bug the hell out of me to come do it, and I did it. And I let one contestant against me, whatever. Um, 
And I must say, I've never seen that the theme was pride, but that was a costume. And I must say, I've never seen a, a pride costume done with colored loofah sponges. <laughs> uh, don't ask me where she got them. I. <laughs> well, you know, you guys, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yes, baby, I love you. <clears throat> you guys have a wonderful and safe pride. Take care of yourself. Jessica, as always, you look beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. Again, tuning in from Indianapolis. Thank you, Chadwick Chung, tuning in from London, Ontario. And here I am, Stephanie Stevens, tuning in from Toronto. During Pride Month, we we want to just say thank you guys so much out there. And be safe out there. Channel. Thank you guys so much for reaching out to Jessica. She's looking for bookings. She's looking for bookings. So add her on Facebook, YouTube. I'll work at a diner for God's sakes. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Chadwick, of course, is the computer expert. So if you need stuff done, you can reach out to him. He'll help you out. Make sure that your computers are up and running fabulous. So if you ever find yourself in the in the middle of a, of a crisis with your computer, reach out to Chadwick Chung. Until then, my friends, from Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show, thank you guys so much. Y'all have a blessed week. Bye, baby. Bye. Thank you. Thank you to our audience out there. Have a great pride, everybody.